So were the apostles or the disciples, were they Seventh-day Adventists? Some of you guys are not ready for this answer. What's up, everybody? So today we have another interesting question, and this question is from our dear sister, Abby. Actually, if you guys have not yet joined our SFP Swordsmith community, you guys can do so. Go to uh, sfpswordsmith.com. Let's go there real quick. Once you go to sfpsourcemyth.com, you guys can log in as a current member. You guys can sign up as a free member or you guys can sign up as a monthly supporter, become a swordsmith and unlock the SFP Swordsmith courses there. Once you guys get there, go down to questions here and then post your question here and I'll try to answer them for you either there or on a video. Today's question is a very interesting question. Um, this is a question from our sister, Abby. Let's see what she says. She says, were Jesus followers in the New Testament Seventh-day Adventists or Seventh-day Adventism was to come after the disciples? The uh, This is a very interesting question. And I would like to uh, I would like to answer this question. And I think some of you guys are probably not ready for this answer. And so I'm hoping that you guys follow me on this because it's a very interesting answer. And we're going to try to take a look at this via scripture and scripture only. We're not going to take a look at, you know, everything else or what, what Mrs. White has to say or anything like that. Only scripture only. Only scripture only. I said only twice, but that's okay. So that's what we're going to be talking about today in today's SFP Q&A. And hopefully we can get this done right away. If you know what I'm saying? So that I can make your day. Because that is the truth. And Jesus Christ is the way. What's up, everybody? Welcome to class. This is my, <laughs> this is, <laughs> my name is Tilla. This is, I'm sorry. What's up, everybody? Welcome to class. This is where you investigate Prove and observe and we test every doctrine with the truth of God's word. My name is Tilla. You guys can follow me on all social media. Links are in the description box. Special shout out and a thank you to everybody who's been supporting this ministry. If you guys want to support, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv. Again, today we have an interesting question. And that question is, were the followers of Jesus Christ in the New Testament Seventh-day Adventists or the Seventh-day Adventism come after the disciples. I'm going to let you guys know up front that Jesus Christ himself was a Seventh-day Adventist just by the Seventh-day Adventist name alone. He was. He also believed in some of the things, uh, and actually all the things that we as Seventh-day Adventists believe in. And I know that's a bold statement. That's a bold, that's a bold, uh, uh, you know, uh, claim. But we're going to, we're going to, we're going to look into this right now and we're only going to look into this in, into into uh into just just the name seven day adventism or seven day adventist now the name seven day adventist that name within itself is a testimony seven day adventist adventist means you are looking forward to the second coming of jesus christ the second advent of jesus christ that's really what adventist means okay seventh day the reason why we you know, we call ourselves Seventh Day Adventists is because we are we worship every day. Right? We worship every day, but there is one day. There is one day that we can say is very special, not just to us, but also to the Lord, because He's the one that set it apart, and that's the seventh Seventh Day Sabbath. Okay, He's the one that set it apart. If you guys want to learn more about that, we have a movie out, a documentary called My Letter to a Sunday Keeper. The link is in the description box below. But he's the one that set apart the seventh day. Christ is the one that set that apart. You can read about it in Genesis 2, where he says he set this apart and he sanctified it and he hallowed it. That's in Genesis 2. It's also in Exodus 20. In Exodus 20, starting from verse 8, it says to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Six days we shall do the work that we need to do. On the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's the Sabbath of the Lord. Not our Sabbath. Not the Jew Sabbath. Not the, not the Sabbath of the Hebrew Israelites. The Sabbath of the Lord. 
thy God, right? So it is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it we shall not do any work, us nor anybody in our in our household or anything like that. And the reason for it, God gives it to us. It's because he created the world in six days. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So Exodus 20 uh, verses 8 through 11 points back to creation week. It lets us know that in, during creation week, after the creation week, or the, after that six days, the seventh day, he created for us to be refreshed, to rest, to be with him. It also says in Leviticus 23 that the Sabbath was there. It's a holy convocation, a holy assembly. The Sabbath is also there for us to, to gather together with our fellow believers. A holy assembly. Church. So, did the disciples believe in the second advent of Christ? The straightforward answer is yes. They did believe in the second advent of Christ. You guys can look this up. I mean, this is universally known that they believed in the second advent of Christ. The, op the apostles also believed in the second advent of of Christ and we can take a look watch this we can go to we can unsheathe our sword real quick and let's take a look at it first Peter 1 verse 7 actually we can start from verse 6 this is Peter who was a disciple also also an apostle uh, first Peter 1 verse 6 says wherein ye greatly rejoice the, uh, though now for a season if need be ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth though it be tried with fire might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ at the appearing of Jesus Christ when is Jesus Christ going to appear second coming at the second coming Peter believed in the second coming so peter just by the name alone adventist peter was an adventist just by that name adventist alone okay so now what about paul let's go to first timothy 6 starting from verse 13 look what it says i give thee this is paul talking okay he says i give thee charge in the sight of god who quickeneth all things and before christ jesus who before Pontius Pilate, witness a good confession that thou keep this commandment without spot, unrebukable, until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. When is that gonna when is that gonna happen? At his second coming. We can even go to uh 1 Thessalonians 4, verses 16 through 17. This is a famous verse from Paul. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout at the second coming. With the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Judging from these statements from Paul alone, is Paul an Adventist? Not, not just, not Seventh-day Adventist, but is, is Paul an Adventist? He believed in the second coming of Christ. What about Jesus himself? Was Jesus Christ an Adventist? John 5 verse 28 and 29. Marvel not at this for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have, they that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. And we just seen from Paul himself that that happens. This thing happens at the second coming of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ himself is an Adventist, just from, the, just from the, the title Adventist alone. Jesus Christ himself was an Adventist. Matthew 26, um, Matthew 26, look what it says. Matthew 26, starting from verse 62. This was when the high priest was there questioning Jesus Christ. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answerest thou nothing? What is it which these witness against thee? But Jesus held his peace, and the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God, that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. And Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Just by this statement alone, was Jesus, did Jesus Christ believe in his own second advent? He did. So then by the title, just by the title alone, 
Jesus Christ was an Adventist? Was Jesus Christ did Jesus Christ did Jesus Christ believe in keeping the seventh day Sabbath holy? Of course he did. Now a lot of people are gonna point us to when Jesus Christ supposedly broke the Sabbath. But which Sabbath did he break? Which Sabbath did he break? Did he break did he break the Sabbath of God or did he break the Sabbath of the Jews? Because the Sabbath of the Jews totally different from the Sabbath of God. If you guys, uh, now we don't have time to really develop this testimony or develop this, um, this, this whole thing, but yeah. Okay. Mm. My wife gave me a smoothie, but I'm on a roll here. So where, where were we? If you look at the book of Nehemiah in the book of Nehemiah, it tells us that people were polluting the Sabbath. They were doing all kinds of things on the Sabbath. And by the way, they actually added on to the Sabbath commandment. The, the Pharisees and all the Jews, the religious uh, leaders back in those days, they added on to the Sabbath commandment. And actually, they even said that you cannot walk holding your handkerchief because it's supposedly work. Where does it say that in God's Ten Commandments? Where does it say that in the Fourth Commandment? It doesn't say that. It doesn't say anywhere where you can't hold a handkerchief on the Sabbath. Jesus Christ was pre picking corn or grains on the Sabbath, and they were he, they accused them of breaking the Sabbath. Where does it say in the fourth commandment that you can't eat corn or pick uh, uh, grains on the Sabbath? Where does it say that in the fourth commandment? It doesn't say. So the Sabbath that Jesus Christ was breaking was not his own Sabbath, because if he broke his own Sabbath, that means he is not worthy to be our perfect example because he didn't even keep his own commandments. If Jesus Christ was imperfect in his own law, who is he? If, God, if Jesus Christ was not perfect in his own law, then who, who is he to tell us to keep his law? Who is he to say, hey, you sin, you die? Doesn't make sense, right? So the, the Sabbath that Jesus broke was not the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Was not the fourth commandment. The Sabbath that Jesus broke was the Sabbath of the Jews, where they had to they added more things that you can't where you can't walk a certain amount of radius you know outside of your house, or you can't carry a handkerchief on the Sabbath, or else it's considered work. The Pharisees were putting a burden on the Sabbath, and the Sabbath was not supposed to be a burden. It says in Isaiah that the Sabbath is supposed to be a delight, that we, that, that we should delight in the Lord on the Sabbath. Let's go to Mark 2 and verse 23. Look what it says. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields, Jesus Christ, on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of the corn. And the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day that which is not lawful? So imagine this. The Pharisees were telling God himself how to keep the Sabbath, what is lawful to do and what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. You're talking to God here. Jesus Christ. Look what he says. And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did when he, uh, when he had need and was unhungered, he and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and did eat the showbread? And by the way, in those days, only the priests can eat the showbread. This is not talking about the Sabbath specifically. So David did eat the showbread, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priests. Okay, only for the priests, and gave also to them which were with him. And he said unto him, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. So the Sabbath was there for man. The Sabbath is made for man. For what purpose? For the purpose of resting, for the purpose of worship, for the purpose of refreshing yourself and being with the Lord, spending time with the Lord. Look what he says. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So what he's saying here is, who are you to teach me how to keep my own law? Who are you to teach me what is lawful to do and what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath? I'm the one that established the Sabbath here on earth. You Pharisees are not to, you, you don't you don't teach me how to keep the Sabbath properly. I teach you how to keep the Sabbath properly. Uh, none of these things, you know, picking corn and stuff like that. None of, none of these things are it's against the Sabbath. In the fourth commandment, it's not against the Sabbath to, to pick, pick an apple when you're hungry and eat it on the fourth on the on the Sabbath. That wasn't in the Sabbath commandment. So was Jesus Christ a Sabbath keeper? 
Jesus Christ was a Sabbath keeper. In fact, if you go to Luke 4 and verse 16, Luke 4 and verse 16, it is actually his custom. It says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. This is his custom. This is his custom. He did this every Sabbath. He consistently went into the synagogue every Sabbath. He went to church every Sabbath. Jesus Christ was not, he, he was a seventh day Adventist. He was a seventh day Adventist. Just by the title alone, okay, just by the title, title Seventh day Adventist, just by that alone, Jesus Christ was a seventh day Adventist. So were his followers. His followers were also Seventh-day Adventists because they were following him. They followed his footsteps. And so they also kept the Sabbath. They also believed in the second advent of Christ. So just by those two beliefs, we know Peter was a Seventh-day Adventist. We know Paul was a Seventh-day Adventist. And Jesus himself was a Seventh-day Adventist and along with his followers, a Seventh-day Adventist. Just by the title alone. Not all the other doctrines that we have, right, as Seventh-day Adventists, just by the title alone. But I can show you that all the other doctrines that we as Seventh-day Adventists have, Jesus also believed in. Okay? But I can show you that another time. What, let me just show you one doctrine that we have. We have one doctrine that, that, that all these other Advent, uh, no, not Adventists, all these other denominations do not have, and that is the doctrine of the 2300 day prophecy, the investigative judgment. This is actually a doctrine from Christ Himself, and He actually mentions it in the Gospels. He mentions part of the 2300 day prophecy in the Gospels. Remember, so the 2300 day prophecy, if you guys, if you guys don't know what it is, I have a video on it. Link is in the description box. What it what what it really is, the 2300 day prophecy is a prophecy that displays the grace of God and the forgiveness of God. Grace, a lot of people use this 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 term grace. A lot of people use that term and then they continue sinning. They say, "Oh, I'm under grace. I'm no longer under the law." So it, it's a very loose term. For a lot of Christians out there, grace means I am no longer under the law. I no longer need to keep the law. There's a lot of misconceptions there. I wish we had time to, to really dig deep on the law and grace. But in Daniel 8 and in Daniel 9, actually, let's go to Daniel 9 real quick. Daniel 9, Daniel 9 explains part of the 2300 day prophecy. You can find the 2300 day prophecy in Daniel 8. The start of it. Daniel 9 explains part of the 2300 day prophecy. It says in Daniel 9, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy city or thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins. So the 70 weeks, which is part of the 2300 days, that is, it's a, this is actually a continuation of Daniel 8. Gabriel says, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. 70 weeks. Remember, a day in the Bible, in Bible principle, a day is equal to a year in prophecy. A day is equal to a year in prophecy. That's in Ezekiel 4 and Numbers 14. It's God makes, God declares a prophecy and he says, I have given thee each day for a year. He says, so each day in prophecy is equal to a literal year. Okay. 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. 70 weeks. Okay. For what? To finish the transgression and to make an end of sin. So God is giving them, the, you know, the people of the holy city, the Jews, God is giving them this thing called a grace period. 70 weeks. Okay. Grace period. 70 weeks is 490 uh, days, but in prophecy, that's 490 years. So 490 literal years are given to the people of Daniel to make an end of sin. That's their grace period. 
God says, hey, I'm going to give you guys 490 years to make an end of sin. This is your period of grace. And by the end of the 490 years, I'm expecting you guys to make an end of sin. You know what that means? That means for 490 years, I'm going to forgive you. Every time you, you ask for forgiveness, I'm going to forgive you. But the, the buck stops here at 490 years. At the end of the 490 years, it stops right there. Jesus Christ said, Jesus Christ said, at the end, at the, at the very end of his ministry, at the very, at the end of the 490 years, Jesus Christ says to the Jews, Matthew 21, verse 43, therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and give it to a nation that brings forth the fruits thereof. That was the end of the line for them. This is not, so it says here, shall be taken from you. That didn't happen until when? When Stephen was stoned. That's when, that was it. Stephen was stoned. Paul took over and he now began to preach to the Gentiles. Remember when Stephen was killed and was stoned, Paul was there and he was the one that was to take the gospel to the Gentiles now. And this is why it says here, the kingdom of God is taken from you, Jews, and given to the nation to a nation that brings forth the fruit thereof. It's no longer up to the nation of the Jews, although the Jews can also can still become spiritual Jews. I'm getting ahead of myself. This is this is way too much for all of, all of you guys, probably. This is probably way too much for all of you guys. It's probably way too much for all of you guys to take in. But basically, God gave them a period of time, 70 weeks, okay? God gave them a period of time, 70 weeks to make an end of sin. That is, that 70 weeks is part of the 2300-day prophecy. And at the very end of the 2300-day prophecy, the sanctuary shall be cleansed. The sanctuary shall be, shall be cleansed. That is the investigative judgment. We, again, we don't have time to really get into this right now, but if you guys want to learn more about this, link is in the description box. I have a video on it. Link, I will link it in the description box. Okay, so again, 70 weeks are determined for the people of God, for the people of Daniel, which are the Jews, 490 Days, which means 490 literal years in prophecy. At the very end of that 490 years was when Stephen was stoned. And that was it for the Jews. As the people of God that, that is going to bring light to the world. They can still become the people of God's spiritual Jews. But only when they become spiritual Jews can they be God's true people. Romans 2. Again, that 70 weeks is part of the 2300 day prophecy where you get the investigative judgment from. That is a, an exclusive, unique doctrine of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. But we didn't get it from ourselves. We got it from the Bible. Did you guys know that Jesus himself talks about this period of grace that we as Adventists believe? He talks about the, this period of grace in the Gospels. He actually mentions it in the Gospels. Remember, part of the 2300 day prophecy, which ends at the beginning of the investigative judgment, is the 70 weeks prophecy. And within those 70 weeks, God gave the Jews a grace period where he would forgive them over and over and over until one day it, it'll stop. And now you have to become a spiritual Jew to be saved. That's at the end of the 490 days or 490 years, at the end of the 70 weeks. You can't have the 2300-day prophecy without the 70 weeks. The 2300-day prophecy that ends at the beginning of the investigative judgment will not make sense without the 70 weeks. So the 70 weeks is essential to the 2300-day prophecy that we as Adventists believe in, in the which that 2300-day prophecy ends at the very beginning of the investigative judgment. Watch this. And I'm only going to give you guys a glimpse. I'm only going to give you guys a glimpse. There is more to this. This is just the very tip of the iceberg. Look what Jesus Christ says in Matthew 18 when I believe it was Peter that asked him, how many times should I forgive my brother? Look what he says. And Peter, and Peter 
to him said, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven times? Jesus says unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Seventy times seven. How many, how many days in a week? Seven. How many weeks was the prophecy? Seventy. Seventy times seven. That's 490 days. Seventy times seven. That's 490 times. And by the way, times in the Bible is also a year. The three and a half years in Daniel 7. And, in, and also in Revelation 13, the little horn will rule for a time, that's one year, times, that's two years, and a half a time, three and a half years. A time in the Bible is a year. Here he says, until 70 times seven, that's 490 years. Jesus Christ says, if you want to give your brothers a grace period, it will have to be. 490 years, just like how I gave to the children of Israel 490 years to make an end of their transgressions. 70 times 7. 70 weeks. Weeks. 7 days. 70 times 7. And like I said, that 70 weeks is essential for the 2300 day prophecy, which ends at the beginning of the investigative judgment that only us Adventists preach. No one else preaches the investigative judgment. And we can get into the investigative judgment another time. But I do have a, a video on it. Link is in the description box below. So, was Jesus Christ a Seventh-day Adventist? Yes. Was Paul a Seventh-day Adventist? Yes. Was Peter a Seventh-day Adventist? Yes. Were all the disciples Seventh-day Adventists? Yes. They were. Just want to take this time to thank everybody who's been supporting this ministry via PayPal. Thank you, Ismail, for that donation. Thank you, Anthony, for that donation. Alicia and Elsa, thank you for that donation. For those of you guys who want to support this ministry, you guys can do so by praying for this ministry and also donating at schoolforprofits.tv via PayPal. Link is in the description box below. If you guys want to support a different way, you guys can do so by purchasing one of these. This is the Revelation verse-by-verse -verse daily devotional for those of you guys who are having trouble with the book of Revelation. This is the book for you. Links for these are also in the description box below. And you guys can also purchase some SFP hats, some t-shirts and things like that at sfpmerch.shop. Links are in the description box below. All these things, all the support and donations do help us keep this ministry afloat. So thank you guys again. And I hope, Abby, that... I answered this question properly to your satisfaction. If you guys want to go deep with this, we can. We can do that another time. Right now is not a good time, but we can do that another time. Maybe we can do a live stream on it and you guys can ask me all kinds of questions. Praise God always. See you guys on the next one. Peace. Avocado Grease. We cannot, we cannot afford to let the critical goal of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius slip out of our reach. And those impacts are getting worse and could potentially be irreversible. The debate over pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib is uh, quite a debate. You know, some people think they're, they're, they're pre-trib, they believe Jesus is coming before the tribulation, or he's coming in the middle of the tribulation, or he's coming at the end of the tribulation. We don't know for sure when Jesus will return, but God does give us several signs, several markers that we know that the end will be near. Many of those are seen in Matthew 24. We have things like wars, rumors of wars, um, pestilences and earthquakes and all these events. You know, there are a lot of dear Christians that are mixed up regarding the, um, the events, the chronology of the coming of the Lord. Uh, all Christians agree there's going to be a tribulation. You can't escape where Jesus says in Matthew 24, there's a time of trouble such as there never has been coming. Jesus is actually quoting Daniel chapter 12, where Daniel says in chapter 12, at that time Michael will stand up, the great prince that stands for the children of thy people and there will be a time of trouble such as there never has been, even under that same time. 
So they all agree there is this great tribulation that you read about. As you look at all the passages regarding the second coming, you realize these are things that you're going to be able to see. Every eye shall see him. The elements are melting with fervent heat. I, I don't know if you've ever been in a sauna. Um, we know it gets past 120, 130. You begin to feel it. And I, I don't know exactly what temperature elements begin to burn up, but I'm sure it's going to be quite hot. And so that's not something that you could sort of ignore. The Bible is clear that we are going to hear Jesus come back with a great sound of a trumpet. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 16, the Bible actually says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. He's coming back shouting with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet of God. So again, you don't see that in many of the ideology and, and, the, and the teachings of today uh, in modern Christianity. Most of them teach it's a secret silent event. But the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes back, He's going to be shouting in all of His power and glory. He's going to be excited to see His bride, whom He has been separated from for so long.